Melbourne, Australia. To some, the other end of the world, but to others, it's home. We traveled 8,000 miles across the world's largest ocean to reach the southern metropolis that is frequently rated one of the friendliest and most livable cities on Earth. Whatever you want, it's in Melbourne. <laughs> it's also home to the Sandbelt, a suburban pocket of golden age golf courses that are widely acclaimed to be some of the best in the world. Yeah, all right, we made it, we're here. That's me, and that's Benny. We're on an expedition this week to experience the city, the Sandbelt, and the Sandbelt Invitational, a one-of-a-kind golf tournament that includes men, women, pros and amateurs, and is the brainchild of Melbourne's very own Jeff Ogilvie. I mean, there's a mentoring aspect, then there's no other golf tournament in the world where you're gonna to get to play 72 great holes that are all different in a row. But before tournament week starts, we link up with Peter Bessie, CEO of Jeff's Foundation, wine enthusiast, and luckily, our host for the week. <laughs> wow. Well, we're just going to start right here by the river, the Yarra River. You can see the clock tower there is Flinders Street Station, which we'll get to, which is the iconic train station in downtown Melbourne. It's a crazy sports town. Crazy about footy, cricket, Australian Open tennis, and the Australian Grand Prix. You've never been to a Formula One Grand Prix, mate. you got to make Melbourne your first. Lots of music, there's lots of art in Melbourne, lots of eating and drinking. It's a great culinary town, but certainly as far as top quality golf, Melbourne is king. Well, I think it's with like London, Philadelphia, and New York. It's one of the four best cities for groups of golf courses in a small area. This is Mike Clayton, former European tour pro, current golf course architect, and product of Melbourne. There's just a pocket kind of southeast. It's just, it was a fluke that Royal Melbourne convinced McKenzie to come out and show us what decent golf was. To transform golf in the city. Elvis Smiley is a young tour pro from Queensland who's playing in the event this week. What I like to call him is the godfather of golf. He knows so much about the game and you know, fortunate enough I've had Clates on the bag a couple times so it's been really nice. Did you play the wrong clubs? Yeah. <laughs> After a walk about town, we get the tip on golf in the city. Clates, what would you what would you say about Albert Park? You get all sorts of types of guys there. Yeah, it's just a place for <laughs> people to play golf. It's everyone plays there. I'm cold. <laughs> we meet up with Epson Tour Pro Jewel Sue for coffee and breakfast before hitting the range. Uh, this is actually where I grew up playing golf, like first junior clinic, first range sesh ever. Haven't been back for a while, but uh, it's really going down memory lane right now. Definitely like the closest to the city. Like, all the other Sandbelt golf courses are probably about 40 minutes away from home. Currently on the Epson tour in the States. I'm not really sure if I would really be playing golf had it not been Albert Park. It's a good vibe, it's a cruisy vibe. I like it. What's your name? Cooper. I'm Colt. Colt. Nice to meet you, Cooper. Nice to meet you, you too, mate. Eh? Everyone loves to come down and have a beer and if you're in a bash and a hundred balls, so yeah, it's good. Hey, guys. What's happening, man? Good, mate. Yourself? Nice, nice to, meet you. to meet you, Justin. Hi. How long have you been playing golf? Since the pandemic. Six months ago. Like, literally about maybe ten times to the range in the last six months. About six weeks ago. Guys, girls, young, old, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite, quite a good mix, really. Would you walk here or something? No, I say cool. Gonna see a couple cuts here real quick. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> Gonna meet you about some of the best golf in the world right here on the Mornington Peninsula. Yeah, I would be too scared to play down there. Thank <laughs> Thanks you. for chatting, see you guys. No worries. Enjoy the game. Jules looks ahead to this week's Sandbelt Invitational. We're all sort of fighting for the same sort of competition and I think that's where this tournament was kind of grown from, was just to stimulate more of that competition amongst all sorts of levels. Go. Feeling good. If you'd asked me what would I have loved, what would I have, what was missing when I was young, if I could go back in time and have, have 
something else there that wasn't there when I was a kid. Playing with pros around great courses, we never got to do that. The best way to get good at golf is to play golf with people who are better than you, you know, on great courses. The name sort of gives it away. The sand belt is a group of courses in this geographical region. There's lots of belts of sand in the world, you know, but the sand in Melbourne is really, really unique and you can just cut an edge to a bunker against a green and it doesn't cave in, it doesn't get soft, you can drive a mower over it and it doesn't, it's just, it turns into concrete effectively. Um, but then you rake it a little bit and it just gets perfect. Can you define the Sandbelt Invitational for me? Sandbelt Invitational is half pros, half ams, half men, half women. But I guess the real definition is we get the best players we can find and put them on the best courses and go compete. Mm. The idea of the men, women and the amateurs all playing together this is an opportunity I would have loved as an amateur growing up. It's just great to see how these guys play. Sebi said he, he was, there was only one guy on tour who had, be, who had a better short game than him, and it was Peter Fowler, so I was hoping to get a little bunker lesson from him. You know, it's such a big part of my development as a golfer, so being able to play this is a privilege. All four courses are in great condition, so yeah, I'm really excited to get after it this week. And I was lucky enough to play with Jen last year. What, what did you learn in particular? Making practice as competitive as possible to stimulate those nerves. Uh, so I just turned pro a couple of weeks ago, so... Congratulations! Thank you. Always a learning curve, and to get to play with guys, it's a privilege, because they just play a complete different game, and... To play these courses, this is where you really learn how to play the game. Oh, you want me to go? I'm rolling. Okay. So we're at Kingston Heath. Wow, it's right in the top 50 in the world. It's fascinating golf. It's strategic. It's interesting. Great set of greens. Beautiful bunkers. There's a debate in Melbourne whether people like Kingston Heath better than they like Royal Melbourne Yard. So Mackenzie came here and transformed golf here by showing us what decent golf was. Wide fairways and angles very distinctively. Sand belt, sand face, sprawling bunkers eating into the greens and just an unbelievable set of greens. So this is right up there in that conversation with Cypress Point, Augusta and the old course. Yeah, this is Augusta, just better really, I think so. Yarra Yarra, and it's a great course, fantastic greens. It's famous for great par threes. It's 11th hole is one of the great par threes in Australia. And Peninsula King was a bit of a newcomer. I mean, it's been there for a long time. And now arguably there'd be a lot of people who would turn up saying it would be their favorite, I think. The best condition of all the courses in Melbourne, I think. Oh, I just, you know, reconfirming in my mind that sandbell golf's my favourite golf in the world. Immensely difficult and, and subtle, and you'll enjoy them a great deal, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's been perfect because we've got Momoka and Cameron tied for lead, so you couldn't get a better last group. You've got Dave McAlusey, who's a local member, who's three behind, who knows the course. So we'll see what happens. Well, Cam was a you know, great amateur player in Australia. You know, like there have been lots of good amateurs, but there's not many make it. And he's obviously an established player on the tour. Moko is Japanese New Zealander. When you watch the play this week, she's, I'm sitting here at a bad shot, yeah. And Dave's, you know, he was number two amateur in the world. He's played well enough in Australia this year to guarantee himself a card in on the European tour. Speed up, same as, uh, same as on the range. I'm just proud that I was making aggressive shot selection choices rather than, you know, playing safe. If you want to win a tournament, you kind of got to go out and hit the shot that's going to make it happen. And... That was their driver of the day. Yeah. Well, that was a shot playing to win. He backed himself to go for it. Yeah. You practice mm -hmm. that shot? Just enough to feel comfortable taking it in a tournament, yeah. Just a little bit. professional golf's a lot more than just what happens from the first tee to the eighth green. It's how you, how you manage your day and how you travel from week to week and how you live your life. And, you know, it's, a, it's not the easiest life in the world. I've been out on tour about 16 years and I'm still learning as well. Yeah, you're chasing those guys. You want, you want to become them one day. So. It's just like a word I, I, uh, I like to um, tell myself, so. Good vibes. <laughs> yes, sir. Hopefully I can help out a couple of guys and making sure my making up their mind this is definitely uh, the way for them and I've dreamt that like of being on the LPGA tour obviously. So hopefully like I get a 
keep on playing for a really long time. I get as much out of them as they get out of me. I mean, not to be cliche, but you really do. As I said, they're enthusiastic and they're, they're like I was 20 or 30 years ago. Still in love with the game and excited about the journey, you know. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of a encouragement, a bit of a nudge in the right direction. Is there a different feeling for you on this, on this ground than anywhere else? I'm pretty happy here, yeah, absolutely. It's home. We've got great golf, by the water, good food, good coffee, good wine. What else do you need? Not much, thanks, Jeff. Done. Is that right? <laughs> well, right. Enjoy the dog's on. Yeah, we can. Oh, he's going to be the